Greetings and welcome. Today I'm going to be demonstrating something I like to call the ghost channel or phantom channel. This is a method I've devised in the wave channel of obtaining two sounds being played simultaneously. Now in Alice DJ, that's sort of a big deal. We only have four channels to utilize, one of which only plays noise. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples on how this can be utilized. This first example is the bass by itself at constant volume. Second example, the bass is constant volume, the ghost channel is constant volume, constant pitch. This third example, the bass is constant volume, the ghost channel is modulated volume, at a constant pitch. This next example, the bass is constant volume, the ghost channel is constant volume, and the pitch is modulated. This next example, the bass is modulated in volume, and the ghost channel is constant pitch, constant volume. And in this last example, the bass is modulated volume, and the ghost channel is modulated pitch, constant volume. Alright, now I'm going to play those examples one more time in a more fleshed out context so you can hear how useful all of them can really be. One thing to keep in mind here is all these zeros contain silence, nothing else.
So before I can show you how I did that in LSDJ, we need to learn a little bit about how sound works and how it behaves. Now I'm sure you all know how the shape of a waveform relates to what the speaker is actually doing. Um, the shape determines at what speed and how long it takes for the speaker cone to push inwards and outwards. So it's going to be exerting force upon the air based on what the waveform is doing. So if we wanted to build a square wave, we would first need to start with silence. And then as this diagram shows up here, we need to apply a force to it uniformly across time until we get these square peaks. As you see on this sine wave, the forces are not uniform. They grow in incremental steps in order to create this smooth transition. So we add our uniform force on top of the silence, and it looks a little something like this they should all be equidistant away from that silence to create these square peaks. Now, instead of starting with silence, we want to start with a sound that's already being played, and in our case, it's a sine wave. So we start with a sine wave, and just like before, we apply that force uniformly upwards, but instead of starting at this flat line, we're going to start somewhere along this sine wave and apply that force uniformly just like before. The resulting waveform will look like it has a square wave embedded on top of a sine wave. And here's what that looks like. As you can see, the forces are still uniform starting from that sine wave as a baseline. Here we can take a closer look at how these waveforms behave. Here's what a square wave looks like when it's being modulated in volume. Now here's that same square wave being modulated, but this time it's on top of a sine wave. Alright, now this time the square wave is going to stay the same volume and the sine wave will be changing volume. Okay, now I'm going to start showing you how I built these waveforms inside of LSDJ. Just like before, we're going to start with silence and then build our square waves up from that. My square wave is going to be about 30 units high in volume. Okay, we're going to start building the square wave by pushing these pixels equal distance away from their initial starting points. And in this case, we're starting with silence. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and then you do this across the entire duration to build your square wave. Alright, so that's our first square wave and then you would continue doing this for every octave. And that's what these are. And once again, just like before, we're going to be adding a square wave on top of this sine wave. So we're going to raise each pixel three units above its initial starting point. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you want to continue all the way down depending on what octave square you're using and cover the entire waveform. All right, and that would be a, um, this is one example of a square wave superimposed on top of a sine wave. So once you've done that to every sine wave, you should get something that looks similar to this. This is the one octave up square. This is two octaves up, and so on, increasing the octave of the square wave on top of the original sine wave. Now, this square wave in particular is fixed volume. We haven't got into um, changing the volume of the square wave yet. Okay, now to create a square wave that has different volumes, you're going to start with the first um, 
the first instance of that uh, score wave superimposed on a sine wave and you're going to decrease those peaks by one pixel every time until you get back to that original sine wave and here's what a couple of those look like and in my case since I only have a three unit high score wave I only get three different volumes Now, in order to modulate that original sine wave, you need to draw every single waveform for this, starting from silence all the way to the maximum volume. And uh, I've already done that, so this is what that looks like. Now you're going to make several duplicates of this sequence and then add every octave of square wave on top of every one of these frames. It's an awful lot of frames to be um, manually editing, but it's the only way to make this possible. Here's what a couple of mine already look like. Now this is all done just by doing the same method I did before. Every single one of these sine waves you'll have to draw manually draw that square wave on top of. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And you're gonna do that for every single frame. It's long and tedious but um, I think it's worth it in the end. Alright, now that we have all of our waveforms drawn, we can start plugging in some notes and choosing our frames. Alright, we're going to start off simple. Let's uh, plug in a note here and choose a desired waveform. To start off, I'm going to choose um, 17. And here's what that waveform looks like. And here's what it sounds like. Now, if I want to change the octave of that square wave, I'm going to be changing the frame. So let's plug in another frame. Now, I want to raise this up one octave, so I'm going to move up one frame. you'll hear that that sine wave stays the same octave but only the square wave moves up and down. Now if I wanted to do the opposite, if I wanted to change the pitch of this sine wave but leave the square wave the same, I would need to do that method in reverse. So I raise the octave of the initial note and then I decrease the frame we use. And you'll hear that that square wave stayed the same while the sine wave actually moves. Now, if we wanted to alter the volume of the square wave, we need to um, choose the appropriate frame. So let's find where the volumes are set up. Okay, how about 0B as our loudest and 08 as our quietest. Alright, so I've plugged in my volumes, and um, like I said before, B is our loudest volume, and then 8 is our lowest volume, like shown here. 8 is silence on the square wave, and then B is the loudest square wave.
Okay, now if we wanted to keep our volume modulated the way it is, but change the octaves, we need to do a little bit of clever editing. So I'm going to erase all these. The first thing I'm going to do is choose my octaves. So instead of B for this first one, I'm going to do F. So it's going to be between B between F and B. So F and B. Now let's copy these and paste them. All right. We have our octaves. Now to change the volumes, we go to each one of these and decrease it or increase it depending on which direction you want to go by the amount you want it to be decreased by. So this one's going to be decreased by one, this one's by two, one, two, and this one's by three, one, two, three. Now we need to raise up from zero. So find the zero from this one, one, two, three, and then raise up one. One, two, three, raise up two, one, two. And then this one's max volume. And then this one decreased by one. Okay, now if I wanted to uh, modulate the sine wave, we need to find the correct frames for that. So let me go to the sine wave modulation and choose the octave square I want. In this case, 4D will be our loudest and 41 will be our quietest. Let's copy this and paste it. All right, I'm going to decrease the volume by one each time. All right, so I've plugged all those in, decreasing by one each time. And now I'm going to play it, and the sine wave should decrease in volume. OK, now we're going to try to alter the octave of the square wave while still decreasing the volume of that sine wave at the same time. We're going to find our uh, maximum volume sine wave and square waves. So 4D will be a good one. And also... How about 5A? So 5A and 4D. Let's see, 5A and 4D. And you copy and paste. And then decrease by however much you want. This time, instead of decreasing by 1, I'll decrease by 2. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. All right, just to make sure, I'm going to go back to my frames and see if 3F is one of these. All right, so I went a little bit too far. 3F is not on the same waveform as that, so let me fix it. 41 is going to be our lowest, so let me fix that to 41. And then raise these a couple times. What is that at? 4E? So 4E is a good one. Decrease these just slightly. Okay. All 
All right, I hope that has shown you a little bit about how the frame switching is working and how the waveforms are set up. Um, I'll post my song file and I'll answer as many questions as you have about this if I wasn't clear about anything. But um, I hope this has opened a lot of possibilities for you and I hope to hear some great music from you guys. Ciao for now.